Let's go. So um, welcome to uh, Photo Chats uh, today. Thank you for your patience while we have worked on getting uh, Dennis connected. Uh, Dennis is out in the Eastern Sierras and uh, Veronica is with us. So they're our guests today and uh, I think we're gonna have a pretty cool program. I'm gonna try to whiz through this pretty quickly so we can stay on, on schedule. Um, we are going to be skipping the program on August 14th. Um, we, so we're going to take a week off. I'm going to be in Greenland and uh, the, I just was having a lot of problems with a lot of speakers that want to work with us, uh, but everybody's doing traveling. So we're going to take that off. And on August 28th, we have, and then correct me if I'm wrong, John, but I, Elizabeth uh, San Juan, and uh, she'll be doing a program and then you'll be getting other updates for September and October. And probably through the rest of the year because it's we, we have a lot of good speakers lined up and they're just trying to fill in dates and so forth at this point so uh we should have some pretty cool programs coming up as you your host obviously it's kevin raver here we got jeff sheweed john cornicello and holger who can't make it tonight he's doing some work so uh holger mishke and um, i want to thank john once again we wouldn't have photo chats if it wasn't for what john did during uh, the pandemic so uh, we were trying to carry on the tradition. I don't know how he was able to do two speakers a week uh, when we have a hard time just lining up two speakers a month. But of course, back then, all of us were um, kind of stuck in our homes and it was pretty easy to do. And uh, it also filled in a lot of gaps and uh, we decided to continue this tradition. And so my hat is off to John uh, for you. doing this. Um, as I said, I'm gonna be in Greenland for uh, almost two weeks. And then I uh, wanna remind all, any of you that are interested uh, Jeff Shiwi, myself, and John Panazzo will be running a fine art printing course. We do this a couple times a year in Indianapolis, um, October 11th to the 14th. We still have uh, about three spots left that we can fill. So if you're interested in being part of that, it's uh, an awful lot of fun. Starts at my house. We have several days in the studio. We've got uh, five printers that we use. Uh, and you'll be learning a lot about making fine prints and walk away with, you know, big prints, small prints, and a whole slew of prints. So if you're interested in that, do that. And pretty soon I'll be launching the uh, 2025 workshops and fine art printing workshops also. So we'll keep your eyes out for that. Uh, what we're going to be doing is putting everybody on mute. I'm almost afraid to do this. Um, yeah, don't. But everyone has already muted themselves. So Okay, good. If everybody's muted themselves, that's good. Um, we're going to run the program. Veronica and... Uh, and Dennis can do this. And then uh, anybody that has questions can put their questions in the chat and John will watch that occasionally and interject where he needs to. And afterwards, uh, if anybody wants to just have a general chat about anything, we'll be open for that. So um, today it's Veronica Cotter and Dennis Keeley and we'll get the, the program running now. So let me switch off here and uh, unshare my screen next, I guess is how I have to do it. Um, Oh, if I can figure out, there we go, stop share. And um, so here we go, Veronica and Dennis, it's all yours. Okay, Dennis, I'll let you start and I'll uh, pull up your website. <laughs> Say something, Dennis. <laughs> um, I'm still here if you are. Yep, we're here, yep. go ahead, we're on live now. Cool. Tell us about yourself. So uh, this is this is a complicated story with with very simple components. In that, um, I, I never intended to be a photographer uh, when I became one, but um, I, I've always looked for the, the the possibility of finding the and. and I'm talking to you from the uh, National Forest at 10,000 feet. Actually quite beautiful out here, but smoky from the big fires up north. But um, they got invited to do this. I couldn't turn it down because it's a few days um, in, in Lone Pine and Whitney, um, Whitney Portal. But, you know, my life started off in New Jersey. Uh, I, I learned to play the drums when I was a kid like most everybody, um, it was the Beatles. Um, I, I went to school and I went to college um, thinking that I was gonna be a, um, an artist, but I, I turned out to be a not 
such a good artist as everybody else. But while I was there, I learned to do something that most people don't, which was uh, um, I studied Javanese music. So I learned to play in a Javanese gamelan, an orchestra of all percussion. And I did that for about 12 years. Um, I graduated from college as a as a as a photographer, amateur, and a and a and a musician. So I started making my living as a musician, um, playing in bands. Um, in the in the seventies, I was in a bunch of punk bands. Um, um, one of the jobs I had is that I became uh, the photo editor for the LA Weekly, which was a startup newspaper. And that put me in touch with um, a lot of people who um, I never thought I would meet. So uh, I wound up playing on uh, the Brian, you know, David Byrne compilation record of, you know, radio outtakes. Um, uh, and then I got in a band with a guy named T-Bone Burnett, and we went on tour with The uh, Clash and The Who. So we played stadiums all over uh, the West Coast. Um, I got tired of playing stadiums because I was a percussionist. I saw my, my stuff twice a day and uh, once in sound check and once uh, in the, in the performance. Um, after being on the road with T-Bone, I played in a band with Leo Kotke and Leo needed a, uh, a photographer to take his picture for his cover. And I said, I could do that. And he said, well, um, you'll have to go see this person at Warner Brothers. And uh, I went and saw uh, the art director and she asked me if I had a portfolio. Um, I said, I actually did. So she looked at my portfolio and she said, actually, you could do this. So I did Leo's record. And, and I'm not sure Veronica's sharing my screen quite yet. But Veronica, if you could just run through the, the musicians from my website, we could just show those and then afterwards if people have any questions about them I could go into some detail but some of the things that you'll see that I did um, sort of tell the story better than I did um, so I photographed yeah. musicians yep I can just keep talking while she sets that up but okay. I photographed musicians for about 25 years um, it, it was some of the most interesting work uh, I never thought I would do but um, it 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 put me in touch with people I um, really was honored to share space with and time. Um, I've had a couple of shows of the musicians. I'm working on a book about my experiences um, photographing them. Uh, the last show I had of the musicians, I was putting them up, and somebody came by and said, "So, so you know all these people?" And I said, "Well, let's." really good question um let's put it this way i don't go to dinner with these people they don't call me up but i i shared very kind of space with these people in a, in a professional interaction i got to know them through both their work and through their ability to, to share themselves with myself and and with the public so i did hundreds of, of album covers cd covers um and, and did editorial work for Spin and Rolling Stone and a number of different publications. Um, the work was fascinating. That, that you might understand is that these are about production. They're not um, uh, just quick shots. We, we met with people. Um, I built sets. Thanks, John. Um, I, I did things that um, I learned to do in school, never thinking that I would ever use that work ever again. But um, I built these huge sets for people. I used uh, <clears throat> um, set, set builders. I used um, makeup people, hair people. Um, I had an assistant. I had two assistants for a while. I had a studio in Hollywood. And, and I also traveled all over the country. Um, so I, I did... I moved my studio on location. Um, I moved my whole my whole world places that um, the pictures always look like I took them. My work looks different than I think most people's work uh, in that in that industry. In that, 
I always wanted to make something that reflected both the person and and what I wanted to do, what how what the statement I wanted to make about them. Um, I also did a lot of hand painted work, so I I don't know if you've seen the Neil Young picture with yeah, a just, pink yeah, background. So I'll tell you just a little anecdote about that. Neil Young called me direct and I answered the phone. He said, it's Neil Young. I said, well, no, come on. Who is it really? He said, no, it's really Neil Young. I saw your pictures and uh, I, I'm i flying down to Southern California. I've had this suit made. Um, I have this guitar that used to belong to Hank Williams and, and I think I'd like you to make my picture. So I went out to the valley, uh, met him the next day and he was in a clothing store, uh, but not just a clothing store. There, there's a very famous um, tailor for the stars. His name was Nudie. And uh, this is the guy who worked for Nudie for 30 years. And the suit was beautiful. It's a white suit. And uh, he said, uh, I said, there's no place to make pictures here. He said, well, I have this warehouse across the street. You might want to work there. So we went across the street. And it, it was an out of business massage parlor. So it had little scenes in it. And one of the things it had was a three wall set of pink walls. I don't know what they did with it, but um, Neil thought that was a great idea. He, he would call the record Neil Young and the Shocking Pinks. And uh, so we photographed him playing the guitar all day. And after it was done, I said, so I'll go home, I'll process the film, I'll send you the proofs. He said, um, why I'm I'm not doing your job and I said well this is the way it works I make these pictures and then I show them to you and you pick one and he said um, look I make the music um, you pick the picture um, and I said well Neil that's not really the way it works uh, he said that's the way I work and the picture you see is hand painted um, took weeks for me to do that but um, it wound up being the cover of, of his record um, the next time he called me was, was to go out to his house. He asked me how small he could be in the picture and still have it look like him. And I said, well, I don't know. Well, I'll come up and we'll make pictures um, at your house on your road. So he spent um, a couple of hours just walking down this road. And at the end, I said, you know, um, you can be as small as possible. It still looks like you. It, it always looks like you. Um, a lot of these pictures that, that I made, I learned a lot about both myself and these people who are, are truly just people first, gifted, talented, um, um, interesting folks. Uh, but but I, I like interesting people. They make good pictures. Uh, in, in my life, I worked for the New York Times. I've worked for... Uh, California Magazine. I've worked for a number of different uh, outcomes, so to speak. And and around the time that, that I got tired of photographing musicians because of iTunes, um, I was also working for the J. Paul Getty Center, the Conservation Institute and the Research Institute. And in conservation, I was photographing scientists. I was photographing the people that cleaned the Sistine Chapel. I photographed them the guy who has the largest pigment library in the world. Um, and I got invited to apply for the chair position at Art Center College of Design in their photo department. And uh, after a year, I got that job and I, I, I did that for the last 18 years. And uh, I, I've recently left the college um, teaching some things on my own, I'm making my own work. Um, I guess I should tell you, um, I spent my time rebuilding my uh, black and white darkroom. So I never sold my film camera. Um, I don't want to step on Veronica's talk, but um, Veronica and I met in a camera. Department. And uh, in those years, she worked for uh, New Seagull, which is the paper that Ansel and Brett Weston used, and later she went to work for Ilford, and now she works for Hanamule. It, it seems almost like that photo is a prenup. We we just share a, a love and interest in in photography, and it's 
its evolution over the last 30 or so years. Um, people think I've had this really interesting life. And, and I would just sort of finish this part of it by telling you that um, it ain't over yet. I'm, I'm still um, looking around for more trouble to make. Um, if you go to my website, you'll see pictures that I've made on the Los Angeles freeways. Um, you'll see pictures that, that I make in the port of Los Angeles. You'll see my Facebook posts, which uh, are, are made with my pictures. And then uh, a, a dialogue um, that, that I like about these kinds of um, interactions. I, 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 I can't believe um speaking about my work um, it's connected with john connected with kevin connected with veronica whom i miss but um uh, i i would ask if is in the chat room um i might i might ask if uh um, I'll, i'm going to stay online while veronica talks about paper so um i'm going to give it over to her well, before I go there, Dennis, and, and it's kind of yeah. weird because Dennis is usually sitting next to me and um, we we kind of go back and forth with these presentations. But, you know, as Dennis mentioned, we met at Sam, Sammy's camera. Actually, in in August, it will be 33 years ago that um, that we met. And, um, you know, our first date was the Irving Penn exhibit at, at LACMA. So obviously we have a lot in common and always have things to talk about. But, you know, we both transitioned um, from analog to digital, although our roots are still in analog. And I think the, the, the thing that Dennis has utilized and actually did a, a presentation recently at Glazers, where we got to see Jeff and John um, up in Seattle, the title of the presentation was "Analog to Digital and Back." And you know, some of those prints that you saw on Dennis's website, um, the one of Neil Young where he hand colored it, that's truly one of a kind. Um, so Dennis has utilized digital um, to to create a body of work that that keeps the originals um preserved and uh it's a it's a new opportunity to to reinterpret that work so dennis talk about that whole part of it we're losing you dennis oh dennis, I'm sorry yeah okay yeah, go ahead i'm here go ahead you, you're better um, now those original prints are made on papers that don't exist anymore. And, and with chemistry, I can't find anymore, but the, but my scanning, the scans of the prints um, allow me to um, make, I'm not going to say copies. They make interpretations of that work that it's taken me a long time to, to find digital papers that, that really reflect the, the quality of those original prints. Um, I'm also scanning um, film uh, and and going direct to digital, but this is the best time imaginable for photography. We were able to do so many more things than we were ever able to do, including talk um, on the phone across the country um, from the place I'm in right now. Um, even though Technology is always the greatest thing. It's always the biggest trial. It, it, it's never perfect. It's always on its way someplace else. Um, the, the opportunity that I had when I left Art Center College of Design was to rebuild my, my darkroom. I had my darkroom. I didn't work in there as much because I spent most of my time um, as, a, as the chair of the department. Um, teaching, uh, meetings, uh, giving direction to the, to the program in the school. But since I've left, I've, I've rebuilt this beautiful dark room with a 14 foot sink. And I have my Jobo processor. I have three enlargers at three Omega D5 XLs. Um, some of the work you saw was, was made on multiple enlargers. I, I composite things in, in silver. 
Um, I can now composite things digitally, but I started this process when when I had multiple negatives that I wanted to print all together. Um, the there was one with hands in it and eyes that was made for an Oingo Boingo cover, and uh, I think that was like seven or eight different negatives. Well, and and um, when people find out that I was at Ilford, usually one of the questions I'm asked is, okay, which which papers replicate a darkroom look? And to Dennis's point, there's nothing like a darkroom, um, a fiber-based print, yep. but Hanamula does have papers that, in my humble opinion, do give you that look of- Mark wasn't yellow. feeling so good. So, um, um, you know, we have some Barida papers, we have map papers, oh, yeah. you know, warmer tone papers, we have cooler tone papers. So those are the kind of conversations Dennis and I have as he looks at images. And when I meet with people at these different events, those are the things that we talk about as well. Um, and Dennis has created his, um, the portfolio that you see on his website with all the different musicians, Dennis has replicated that in um, various formats. Um, and Dennis, talk about your portable portfolio. Well, I want to talk about two things. You reminded me that, so when I rebuilt my darkroom, I also set my congas up in there. So when things are in the wash, I'm, I'm still playing music. Yeah. Um, I've never let let that go, but um, the the portfolio that I made, unless you hold the, the the original silver gelatin next to the the digital print, you would never um, miss anything. They they really I've spent a lot of time trying to really make sure they have a feeling. Um, the I've made it in a couple of formats in that Onimil makes a, uh, a a four by six size um, that's, that comes in a tin that um, got me my first musician show. Um, I don't often talk about this, but when Veronica, I got this opportunity to have a show, I wasn't sure what I was gonna show. Veronica said, why don't you show the musicians? And I said, well, you know, I'm sort of constantly conflicted about that. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure people wanna see that work. And, uh, I put this little four by six portfolio together and showed it to a gallery and they said, wow, we would love to show this work. And, it, and it's been, been more popular than, than I thought it would ever be. Um, I, I've had to learn how to just say thank you because every one of those pictures is a long story. Um, and, and some people don't need to hear the story. Some people, um, just want to love the picture. And and my job is to not tell them about who these people are, but let them really relate to the picture the way they already relate to the music. Um, the book that I'll have coming out probably next year will be my stories about um, meeting and, and, and working with these folks. Um, it, it's, a, it's a much more complicated experience because most people don't like having their picture taken mm -hmm. but um it, it's a it's it's something that i love doing is making a picture that goes past that barrier um there's a picture in my portfolio of, of joe cocker and uh joe actually said right up front he said i don't really like having my picture taken i said well you know it's it's really important for you to have your picture taken for people to see you um, I said, you know, I was at Woodstock when I was like 13. And uh, I said, it, it changed my life. Um, your performance there was unbelievable. It, it can't even be described by the movie. And he said, you know, I meet a lot of musicians um, in, my, in my travels. He said, I hardly meet, ever meet anybody who was actually there in the audience. And I said, man, you were playing to the last seat in place. It, it, changed the way everybody was there you really made it a moment and and it was really critically important and 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 in in some respects my job is a, is a 
is kind of an ambassador between a, a musician, a, a, a person that loves music, and, and a person that loves to make images that are about something, about music, about the freeways, about um, a, a kind of interesting um, take on a, on, a, on a common or mo mostly overlooked circumstance. It's not just a picture ever. It's, it's always something that, that is considered and, and has, has a quality. And, and those thoughts really do align with my materials, my, my film, my paper, uh, my chemistry, my time, my time in the dark room, uh, the music I listen to in the dark room. Those are all critical elements to making up this interesting life with Veronica. Um, used to be she'd bang on the wall and say, okay, that's too loud. It's two o'clock in the morning. Um, now um, my dark room is separated from the house. We're, we're much more uh, um, aligned, so to speak. Um, not, not, I don't interrupt her, her sleep so much anymore. And it, it uh, Jeff Shiwi, when we saw him a few weeks ago in Seattle, he pulled out his tin of images, and it was great yeah. to to see the the. You were in Italy, right, Jeff? Um, was that Italy? Yeah, that was uh, street shooting in Italy, and I used the five by eight. Um, I think it was the Barita, uh, and it, I got to tell you. Uh, you know, I love Dennis, and, and, but I get better black and white prints digitally than I ever did in the darkroom. And I know that is uh, uh, heresy to some people that are only analog. It's, it's, I get better D-Max and I get better sharpness, basically, because uh, I'm not going through an optical system. But yeah, I love those little tins. I, I, and that is the smartest thing. And the funny thing is the reason that I love the little tins, in addition to the fact that they're little tins, I like the rounded corners. Mm -hmm. And I've adopted the rounded corner thing. Well, the reason I backed into it because uh, Epson sent me a bunch of exhibition fiber and the packaging of the paper was so bad, the corners were dinged. One corner was dinged. I was printing up a portfolio for review and it's like, I can't show prints with one little corner dinged. So I got a corner cutter and, and uh, had an entire folio of round corners. So yeah, congratulations on that, uh, Hannah Mule. That was brilliant. Well, and it's hard to show these things, you know, virtually, but here's a, a four by six. And um, with the, the, the larger A5 size, what Dennis and a friend of ours who actually is up in the Eastern Sierras as well, what they started doing during the pandemic, um, Mark would send a text and say, okay, I'm going to leave a tin by your mailbox at noon. And then Dennis would have his, his tin out there. They'd exchange tins. And then about a week later, they'd jump on Zoom and do kind of an informal critique. And so that kept up the duration of lockdown. And then, you know, it extended now that everyone's getting back together, they still meet for coffee once a week and they will, you know, they pull out the, the tins and they start talking about work. And also during the pandemic, what Dennis and I started doing is making our postcards. So, you know- yes. The paper's not coated on the back, so you can't print an image. Right, yeah. But there's enough tooth or texture that um, you can do um, text. And that that series that Jeff did is just beautiful. Um, you know, I'm a sucker for black and white, just given my, uh, my DNA, but um, it is a beautiful collection of images. And... Um, uh, you know, Dennis used the four by six or the A by or the A five cards when he had a show at the uh, Palace Verdes Art Center. It's how he sequenced his show. So as opposed to moving the big thirty by forty or twenty by twenty four prints, he moved the cards around, and it was mu much easier to um, to lay the show out. But what I noticed. Um, up at Seattle. So I was there, Dennis and I were there for analog week two weeks ago. 
And uh, Jim, you stopped by, I do believe. That is that we started, and John was there, Jeff was there. We started making um, four by six prints for people, just random. Uh, and two people said to me, wow, I've never seen my work print printed before. And it was, it was this epiphany. It's those moments you live for. And actually one young man said, uh, he said, do you mind if, if I give you a, a picture of me? And I said, no, this is your image. We'll put whatever you want. And when I gave it to him, he said, I want my parents to have a picture of me to put up at home. And I thought we all, you know, our, we, we grew up with our lives on the wall with, with pictures of ourselves. So it kind of underscores the importance of, of printing. And as Dennis said earlier, this is a remarkable time to be involved with, with image making. You can shoot on film, you can go in the dark room, you can shoot on film, scan it and do digital output. Um, you can, you know, Veronica, Veronica makes a really good point here in that it's never really about technology. It's, it's about storytelling. It's, mm -hmm. it's really about these images tell stories about everyone, about the people that see their print for the first time. It's about uh, musicians that see an image that inspires them uh, to, to make more music. It's the, and and as, as image makers and stories storytellers, we're able to use the technology in individualized ways that, that that we're obsessed by, you know, um, I, I think, John, you're going to have Keith Carter on here one of these times, and Keith and I have long talks about sharpness being overrated. Um, and, and I kind of agree with that. Sometimes uh, a soft image is, is amazing. And sometimes um, I also have a corner rounder, so I can round any size print to, to reflect that, that sensibility um, that the four by sixes and the A5 um, prints have. Um, people love to hold a print in their hands. And, and, and as much as we are online today, it, it's really a conversation about the object, about the finish, about the, I know Veronica and I talk all the time about a, a, an image is not finished until it's printed. And, and we have a little easel on the dining room table that when I'm done, I can throw a print on there. And we have a, we have a very interesting private conversation about what I could do or what, what I've already done or, or how this might mean something. And, and it's really, you see a print, it asks you a million questions. It, it's not about the, the image, it's about how a person sees it and why they look at a print twice and why they wanna own something. Um, what makes them wanna put a picture of someone else's on their wall. Um, it, this is a conversation that has been going on since the French cave painting. And, and today we have more ability to print on more different kinds of sub, substrates than ever before maybe. Um, to an audience that's re, rediscovering themselves in in the real world, the real world of clothing and shoes and cars and stuff where, where an image can really tell a beautiful story about something, something overlooked, something common that's that's now actually phenomenal. Um, Jeff's pictures of Italy show you a side of Italy that most people don't see um, because the professionalism that he brings to this um, it was still made with a little kind of tourist looking camera, but it was his intention that gave those pictures great meaning and great in intensity. Um, so it, it's, it's certainly about using technology, but it's not, not really about using all of it all at once, every day, all the time. But the invitation to use it poetically, in a sense, um that's the path that I think Veronica and I've been exploring with with her connection to to making paper and my connection to making images. 
And as I tell people, most of my DNA is, is analog. And um, when I started with Hanamula, it wasn't, it was a kind of a steep learning curve in that I had to learn, you know, about all of these fine art papers, but the conversations are, are really the same. Um, are you printing? You should be printing. And as, as, the Hanamula logo includes paper makes the difference. So, um, you know, we have papers that are 100% cotton. We have papers that are 100% alpha cellulose, which is a refined wood pulp. We use bamboo, hemp, agave, sugar cane um, when we make papers. Um, and, you know, one's not better than the other. Uh, it's just how do you choose to represent that particular image? And you know, we, t we talk about these things constantly and during the pandemic, especially, we did presentations. My colleague on the East Coast, Kevin Graham, who Kevin Raber knew, we would spend an hour plus talking about, you know, the, the subtleties between papers. You have warmer toned papers, cooler papers, neutral toned papers. And I think one of the, the big epiphanies for me was that two things coming from from analog I just assumed that a textured paper would soften the image but it's the exact opposite you know there's something about the texture that gives paper an extra depth or dimension and the other thing I must admit I had a bias against canvas I used to kind of turn my nose <laughs> against canvas because I was a purist when it comes to the dark room and um, I have to say, you know, fast forward and technology and the ability to make papers and, and canvas, and we have other companies as well have some really beautiful canvas. Um, and I, I would like to give a shout out to Hanamila because I am really, really impressed and proud of the legacy of Hanamila. It's a 440 year old paper mill. It's the oldest paper mill in Germany. Um, but in addition to that, um, we have a high regard and focus on sustainability. Um, the mill is totally off the grid, so it's powered by wind, solar, and water. Um, our natural line papers, 5% um, of the proceeds go to fund environmental initiatives. And we're always looking at ways to lower our carbon footprint. And I'd encourage you to go to the website because there's a lot of information on all of that. And the reason I mentioned that is that I think more and more people want to know who they're doing business with. Um, and as I said, Hanamula has a very impressive legacy. Um, you know, I've done hour long presentations just on the photo cards. And um, anyone who knows me knows that it's probably my favorite format. It's a great way to, you know, when uh, we talked about photo cards at Glazers, Jeff literally pulled his tin out of his um, his messenger bag. And I always, always have my tin with me. And, you know, I, I talk to people about creating a portable portfolio. I talk to people about um, making their own promo cards. Um, you know, I already showed you a postcard. Um, there are so many different uses. Um, I met somebody, I, everything seems to be happening in, in Seattle lately, but I met someone who creates her own recipe cards. You know, during the pro, uh, during the pandemic, I started scanning all my old Polaroids so that I could preserve the originals and share these with family members. Um, when I was visiting a, a big color lab in Seattle, I just, two of the people there happened to be into music. So I pulled out Dennis's uh, portable portfolio and one of the women with the picture of Maria McKee, I'm gonna have to clean this up a little bit. She said, this is how I, or this is the person that Effin got me into music. Um, and I think if I had just told her that Dennis had photographed Maria McKee, she probably would have said, oh yeah, that's cool. But by showing her the image, man, it took her back to when she first started to um, to get into music and, and get into a band. Um, 
So I, I, I love talking about printing. I love talking about paper choice. Um, and, you know, I held this up earlier. These are all the fine art papers. You're talking 35 plus papers. Um, if anybody wants one of these, um, just send me an email and I'll send it to you. What I like about this, it's all about the paper. And it's a lot of the same conversations we had during during digital, or excuse me, during the dark room. You know, are you printing on a fiber-based paper? Are you printing on an RC paper? Is longevity an issue? Is it not? Um, are you more inclined to print on a, a warmer base tint paper? Cooler, neutral? Do you want texture? Do you want it smooth? Do you want a little bit of tooth? Do you want glossy? Do you want satin? Do you want pearl? Um, so there are, are you know, different, many different considerations. You know, those are the questions that, that we, we've been dealing with in schools across the United States, which is this transition from history. Um, and, and history goes long and, and way back. And, and what goes forward? And, and what I like to see is that companies are making sustainable papers. I like seeing, when I first started to see the, the range of papers that Hanamil produces, Veronica and I had some long talks about like, why do they make all these surfaces? As an analog photographer, I just looked at matte papers, glossy papers, air dried papers, warm tone and cold tone. When I started to use these digital papers, I started to really see that these reflected um, something in my image that that was limited before that that I really could use paper service to tell like a even a more personal story and and what I see Veronica doing most of the time these days is working with a diversity of artists and and people that have an idea of different outcomes um, as as different as day and night there's a I'm not going to tell Veronica's story as a woman who who makes lampshades out of the rice paper. We we made shades for our mud porch out of out of the on a mill rice paper. These papers have so many more uses than um, papers used to have, or we used to think they had. And um, integrating these things into our lives um, gives gives a really remarkable vision for both how images tell stories about the present and the future and how the papers themselves become really important objects that 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 live with us that grow with us that age with us um i'm gonna keep repeating myself this is the greatest time to be alive mm -hmm. and be an image maker and a mm -hmm. storyteller um it 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 only goes up from here I mean, if Ilford actually has a, a product that, that was launched just before I left and uh, the, the gallery, the graded paper, I think it's the grade four. So what they did is they tweaked the emulsion so that it's sensitive to the red laser of a digital enlarger. So it's a digital exposure, but then it goes through a, a wet process um, and it's truly a fiber base um, print, a, a silver gelatin fiber base print. So, to to the earlier comment about you know shoot shoot film, print in the dark room, shoot film, scan it, do digital output, or you can capture digitally and um, uh, do a, a silver gelatin fiber base print. You know, and we haven't even touched on um, alternative process and Hanamula makes a paper for that as well. Um, and I'm noticing that um, schools have put alt process back into the curriculum. So you're talking platinum, palladium, cyanotype, Van Dyke Brown, um, and younger people are gravitating toward um, film and these older processes. Um, years ago, Ilford did a survey of their film users, and no surprise, 30% were under the age of 30. And um, one of the questions they asked was, well, why do you like to shoot film? And the answer that I remember, because it really resonated with me, was it makes me slow down. 
Um, and this is these are the generations that grew up in front of a computer. And so for them to step back, slow down, um, really kind of look at what they're photographing, they appreciate that. And a, a number of them are also listening to vinyl. They're doing old school journaling. So um, um, it's great to see this resurgence in image making and printing. Um, you know, you know I, one I, of the things that we one of the things we saw in school is people bringing their their parents their dad's camera in their their grandparents camera in and um running film it's almost it's almost like these cameras are time machines they i don't even know that anybody's made a count of how many uh serviceable film cameras there are out there but um i probably have 50 cameras i got i got an 8 by 10 i got a couple of 4 by 5 I've got pinhole cameras. I've got 35 millimeter cameras. I got my Hasselblad, and then I have all those plastic cameras that I love. Um, it, they make pictures that 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 the professional digital cameras almost can't make um, because there's there's a kind of um, happenstance or or serendipity in them that uh, an unpredictable quality that I have to say my students love. Um, they they are exploring and experimenting and and really looking at where they fit into a uh, like Veronica said to a to a life in front of the screen. Um, they they want more than that. They want to have they want to have more fun, but they also want to make something that's, that's timeless, something that, that goes across time, something that maybe is something old, something you know discarded, but reinvented um, today and uh, and tell the story about their path into their future. Um, not everybody has to be artists. Um, everybody has to have an interaction with art. And, and that's what enriches everyone's lives, whether that's reading or music or photography, poetry, um, uh, movies. Uh, these these forms of, of expression complete us and and paper's one really important part of it but this idea of people telling stories through any kind of technology is is the part that becomes critically important people still write books um, longhand uh, some people still use typewriters some people use uh, you know keyboards um, in all of these things, um, the story is in you. The story is not in the device. Um, I had a kid at school brought me one of those Sony cameras and put it in my hands and told me it was a, the best camera in the world. And I said, yeah, there's a lot of bad pictures in here and you're gonna make all of them. So get ready. It's not gonna be about the camera. It's gonna be about what you do, the decisions you make, the choices you make, and and the story that's yours like how do you find that you may find that through this camera you may find it through a half frame camera you might find it through working with your dad's camera you might find it in a, in a camera that hasn't even been invented yet so uh um i i a bit of pollyanna but also an eternal optimist i i think the world's in a in a pretty chaotic place I think the stories that we tell about this time lead us out of this time into a better time um, it's it's uh, um, the the invitation to tell these stories that's important we we want to look at all these things and and both respond and reflect on them not react so much well and and <laughs> we see such a variety of images um, and I've had the great good fortune over the years to meet some remarkable photographers, you know, the, the Leica gallery here in Los Angeles, it goes from one amazing show to the next. And Todd Heido had a show. He prints on Hanamila paper, um, Mathieu Baton and, and 
um, Kwaku Alston. Their shows were printed on Hanamula. And I never grow tired of looking at these fine art images that sell for, you know, 5,000 plus. But then, you know, I'm reminded of the story of a young guy that I met several years ago up in Berkeley at Looking Glass. He came in, it was an event with Canon and Sony and some of the other camera manufacturers. And I was paired with, with Canon to do printing. Young guy comes in, has no idea what's going on. And I said, well, if you airdrop an image, we'll, we'll make a print. And um, so he did we made an image and he he walked away and I, I couldn't read his body language. And I said, did, did you like the print everything? Okay. And he said, well, first of all, as he was trying to figure out which image he just kept scrolling through his phone and he goes, well, I guess, yeah, this one would be okay. So when I approached him after he had the print, he said, uh, well, you know, this was the first day of our vacation. We were in Costa Rica. We went for breakfast and we went in this really big hike. And it's like he had never really seen that image before. And I think it's the power of the print. Was it the greatest print in the world? No, but to him, it meant it was significant in that it was a springboard for his memory of, of that, that holiday. Um, and the other story I usually tell so, um, you know, I mentioned that I've had the great good fortune of meeting photographers over the years. Um, and when I first started in the photo industry in 1981, I was working for New Seagull um, in New York City, which working in New York City with those photo dealers, that's that's a different story for another day. But um, uh, I flew out to Northern California and I met Brett Weston in the morning, who first asked me how old I was and then told me he dated girls my age. And then in the afternoon, we went to see Ansel. And um, I, someone said, take a book, get Ansel to sign a book for you. So we went to Ansel's dark room and John Sexton, who is now a very well-known photographer, was Ansel's assistant. So we got the tour, um, spent a, a significant amount of time with, with Ansel. And at five o'clock, Virginia Adams came in, rang the bell and said, it's cocktail time. So we were, um, we stayed for cocktails. And at one point Ansel looked at me and he said, did you want me to sign your book? And I was clutching this book. I go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but the, the, I mentioned that because that probably topped the list of all the highlights in my 40 plus years was meeting Ansel Adams. But um, a year or two after I, that. I, uh, I I thought it was me. Oh, yeah, that's the that, highlight that, of your. Yeah, yeah that's it. That's it. Yeah. No, I mean professional highlights. You're my oh, personal that. highlight. <laughs> But a few years later, um, I attended the Ansel Adams workshop and um, the instructors had a little gallery show after and um, um, were showing work and we could buy work. And Morley Bear, there was an image um, that I just fell in love with. And this was, I think, 1982. I wasn't making any money and I was living in New York City. I literally drained my checking account and this print cost me $300. And if I could turn my computer, it is right over there. And I look at it often and it brings me as much joy or maybe more than the, the day I bought it. So for me, that's the power of the print and why you need to print things and put them up, share them with people. Um, and I'm, you know, I've been fortunate all these years to work for companies that made extraordinary materials to print on. And um, the conversation remains the same. Are you printing? And hey, let's talk about papers. And that's, you know, yes, my personal highlight is, is meeting Dennis and having those conversations for, you know, 30 plus years. And now, you know, Jim... Jim's my my friend who I get to see when I'm in Seattle, and 
uh, we'll print some of Jim's images. We'll look at them. We'll talk about, and sometimes Jim will print your image on a couple different papers so we can have that conversation, right? Yes. I mean, it's being able to talk with Veronica about paper choices is enormously helpful. Uh, I'll go in with, I don't know how to print this <clears throat> particular image. And she'll say, well, have you thought about this one? And the answer is usually, well, no, of course I haven't thought about that one. And I have used papers that I have, I'm now spotlighted, it'll be a few people. Um, it's, there are lots of papers that do things that aren't obvious to me. And so being able to have someone say, well, think about this. And because papers, uh, I've got sample packs of things, but I'll often not, not think, not know how an image is going to look on a paper. And so, yeah, I printed one image on rice paper, which I thought, I'm not that sort of artist. I'm not going to do rice paper. Well, now, actually, <clears throat> yes, I am. Um, and it's, I mean, I'm old school, like a few of us here, and used to be you get your film developed or do it yourself and get prints on one paper because it's whatever the place had. And now being able to go into Glazers or other photo stores and see the wall of papers and all the choices. And each paper reflects an image differently. And being able to explore that um, is a wonderful way to continue to explore images. Um, and certain papers are just the, you know, I could go on and on, but we're here to listen to Veronica and Jenna. So I will shut up now and love this back to Veronica. But but Jim makes a good sure. point. It's such a personal choice. Um, and I tell people the hardest question I'm ever asked is they'll show me an image and they'll say, which paper should I put this on? And I'm always willing to give a recommendation, but um, you, I could show the same image and I have on six or seven different papers. And I'm thinking they're going to pick the metallic and they'll pick a textured paper. So you just never know. And uh, Jim mentioned sample packs. It's why I always recommend if you're not familiar with Hanamula paper or um, there's a, a certain range or category of papers you don't think you'd be interested in, I always say, just get a sample pack and try it. You you you, you don't know until you you print on a textured paper. Um, and the other paper that that usually people are a little suspicious about is the metallic. Uh, and I, people automatically think that it's a, it's metal or it is a polyester based material. It's neither of those. It's the only fine art metallic paper and black and white reproduces beautifully. It does a great job with color. Um, you know, John printed some images on the metallic, um, and I'm sure Jim, we've we've printed for you and and um, Jeff. I can't remember if if I sent you some of the metallic, but um, there's a there's a there's a joy to to looking at prints and and doing a deep dive into papers and looking at the same image on different papers um, that you just you can't replicate. Um, you know, I always tell people I love to look at images and I do, I absolutely do. It's one of the, the perks of my job. And if someone hands me an iPad or a phone, I never know how many images are on there. And I will look at every single one of them. But if someone gives me, you know, a, a, a tin of work or just a, a few loose prints, then, then we can really, really, kind of get lost in those images. Um, and I, 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 I just love that. That's why I love doing these events, um, in-person events, because we can have these really nuanced conversations about images and paper. And, you know, I, I have no idea how much time we have, but um, I wonder if people have questions. And sometimes the questions remind me of something I may have forgotten to mention. Well, we, we can open it up to questions now, but um, I do want to interject. Um, you know, I, I put a link on the chat form uh, on an article I did on printing with tins. I'm a big Hanamuli fan um, as far as printing goes. And uh, printing is my, my love. Um, uh, that's why we do fine art printing uh, classes. And 
Uh, Veronica, I invite you to come to Indianapolis at the Art Center where I have my studio and you know, see our setup. We've got five printers and we teach there. Jeff is one of the instructors when we do our, our workshops. And I would love that. You know, it would be great to, to meet you there now that I don't have Kevin anymore. Um, so I'm here for you. <laughs> okay, man. Well, that's, it's good to know. But uh, I just, I really feel that until you hold something in your hand, you really don't have a photograph. And, um, you know, while the iPad is great and all the computers and the ability to share pictures and, and share our images at least, are great there, there's still nothing until you you hold it in your hand and you can feel the texture of the paper and you get a feel for that the the the, the blacks and you get a chance to peek into uh, shadows and find details that you just didn't know were there and um you know it's it's as as we've said already there's never been a better time to be a photographer when you consider the fact that we have repeatable results now we can make prints with repeatable results and as jeff said earlier you know, the, the black and white coming off some of these digital printers uh, are just amazing, not to mention uh, the, the color images. Uh, we, you know, we're not bound up between a zone that has to slide on a scale. We can now take advantage of the, the full scale of uh, tonality and control all the aspects of, of making a print that we want. Um, you know, I mean, that's what I do after dinner. I'll go down and make prints um, <laughs> just because I can make them. So it's really good, and I'm glad that you've shared what you have today, Veronica. It means a lot. Um, and uh, well, and Kevin, I don't know if you talk about this. Um, um, it's interesting how people display work. Papers now have such beautiful textures or surfaces that more and more I'm seeing people that will frame an image, but they don't put the glass in, um, so that you have that interaction not only with the image but with the paper. And there are these bar systems. It almost makes an image look like a scroll. Um, and it, it's these yeah, we, are. I've manufactured my own framing system that snaps together with magnets so that we can hang prints like that. But part of the print workshop, we actually visit a frame shop and we show how you would frame a, a kind of a, a gallery museum type of uh, uh, framing, but without glass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I basically say, you know, it's some of these papers now you, you can see the texture or you want a matte paper, um, you know, like a nice matte fiber type paper uh, and you get no reflections and no, no reflections from the glass and you actually feel more attached to the, the image that way, even though you can't hold it, you know, you can go up and explore it. And um, so, you know, we, we definitely show not to or how not to frame with with glass and the, the frame shop that we do this demo on really shows you know the whole art of making good frames cutting the molding mm -hmm. and you know putting it all together and that, that's an important part too i mean there's a lot of aspects to you know displaying prints it's one you know obviously you got to select the image you got to make a print you got to figure out the order that you're going to present these images in uh sequencing as we would call it and you know then if you're going to display these you know how you frame them and making good frames too that you know turn out to be sellable so it's all it's all wonderful stuff. And the more you learn about it, the more you get addicted to it. And um, part of what I tell people when they come to the printing workshops is you're, you're about to experience a new addiction. And once you get past the hang up that prints are too hard to make and start using some of the good software that's out there. And, you know, Jeff gives some presentations on soft proofing. We do hard proofing the whole 10 yards. Um, all of a sudden you're going back and exploring the last 40 years worth of images, finding things that you want to print. And it becomes a whole new, a whole new thing. So, uh, I think and, and when you can see, and I'm sure this is is part of the the workshop you you teach, when you see all the different papers that you can print on, it it really gets people excited about printing. Um, um, and with Hanamula, if you look at our traditional fine art side, so there are the uncoated papers for gouache, uh, watercolor, et cetera. Those are some of the first papers that we started to, to coat nearly 30 years ago. So William Turner exists as an uncoated paper, but then you have William Turner on the, the, the fine art, digital, digital fine art side. Oh, that's um, such a nice paper. Oh my God, that... And that's what my business card is printed on. I can't tell you how many times I've given somebody my business card 
and they're still, you know, the conversation continues and they're just holding on to my business card. Um, and that, that truly is one of those papers that it's counterintuitive. You would yeah. think that one's going to soften the image. And there's something about that texture that when you look at it, it just really draws your eye into it and you kind of get absorbed by the, the details and the, the 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 colors that it reproduces um it's, it's, it's a gorgeous i do have paper. a question for dennis dennis are you back with us I'm muted am i yes. you're there you're I'm muted you. now. good okay uh you had some wind noise so i went ahead and muted you um <clears throat> so uh i just have a question while you were talking um we had veronica on the screen and i thought well I went ahead and showed some of the portraits, uh, my first select, uh, which I haven't uh, shown you, but there were pictures of you uh, on screen while you were talking. Um, I just kind of curious, how, how did it feel to be photographed by me? <laughs> Horrifying. <laughs> nobody, nobody likes to have their picture taken. You know, uh, a lot of the musicians that I, um, photograph. It was really like talking them down off the the wall because um, they do this one thing that that that's really um, without without images. But I always try to make people relax. You made me pretty relaxed. So at some point, well, you got to understand, everybody. I was photographing Dennis in the basement garage at Glaciers. Um, because I had to set up my little studio in a suitcase, which John uh, Corticello took some photos of. Uh, and it was hot, but fortunately you were wearing shorts. Uh, but That's it was right. fun to photograph you. But I just wondered if you got a, an appreciation of what you've put all those people through by now being the victim instead of the perpetrator. You know, I, I've had to... I've had to have my picture taken a lot more since I became the chair of that department. Um, it, that, that, that. We're losing you. They would ask me questions about like, what should I do with my hand? And I would think, well, try to keep them at the end of your wrist um, <laughs> because um, otherwise I'll be horrified. Um, people always talk to me about their best Side. And I and I, I never thought that people had a best side. I thought they had a best expression. I thought that 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 the portrait was about them, but also about me, about about the the time we spent together. And I'm I'm actually really proud of of what I was able to accomplish with people that at first were resistant or or um, more than resistant to having their picture made. And and what what came out of it that um, the, I think Veronica probably showed you the Bootsy Collins picture. So Bootsy, um, I showed him these prints at, at, at Columbia when they were done. And he said, I'm just going to go home. I'm just going to let the pictures talk about me because um, these look better than, than I do ever. And then he wrote me a letter saying that I was the best photographer in the world. And I and I still have that. <laughs> I cherish those those kinds of moments. But um, some people were difficult. But even in that sense, there's a, a a kind of respect of space. And I did notice that you didn't violate that space. I think that people have a sense of um, where that where that line is. And I, I never wanted to make a picture of somebody that they didn't want made um and i and I, I let you make those pictures because we had a, a a a moment together that was certainly about both of us investing in that that outcome so i can't wait to see them yeah i've got pictures I, I, on the screen well, right everybody now. else has seen them so yep <laughs> The only thing I'll say is that um, Dennis had enough of, of having hair. So before he, he took uh, the trip to the Eastern Sierras, he 
literally shaved it all off. So it, it's gone it's again. A nice record of when Dennis had hair. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Does that, anybody, uh, if you want to unmute yourself and um, add to any comments or have any questions, please do so. Doesn't look like we've we've got anybody coming on, but um, well, first off, I let me say this, um, and then we can just kind of we'll stop the recording. Um, I want to say thank you to both of you today for for being part of this. Um, regardless of what little technical difficulties we have, it's amazing we work through those, which is you know, part of what we mm -hmm. seem to do every day as photographers. Um, and uh, I look forward to meeting both of you in person someday. Um, and uh, if anybody just wants to, if you guys just want to come out and spend some time you know, at the studio and work on five printers, we've got them. So um, it's quite a nice enough place where we can do some cool stuff. And I do hope that you come and visit. I, I would love that. I would love to have a conversation with, with you and Jeff and, and, and talk about um, the, what, what that, what that sharpness could do in in my work you know and inviting trouble into my work. What, what's next well we can we can do that and uh certainly got the facility to do it in and uh it's it's a pretty cool place and hopefully we can do that uh you know we'll yeah stay in touch and, and, and get that done um I, I really feel cool about that before i go here though is jim you had a question i see your hands raised or have you no so, um, so one of the things that is changing that I don't know what to think about is that traditionally we have archives of prints. I mean, certainly some folks here have large archives, many, many boxes of prints. With the continuous evolution of paper, Hannah Mueller just came out with a new write of paper. Um, or new papers. Yeah. So, and now there's sustainable papers and there's, there's a continuing wealth of choices. What is it? Uh, I'm not even sure how to ask this. Um, as we move forward into the future, whatever the future is going to be with all these wonderful new papers and all the papers yet to come, what do you suggest to photographers who are like, I, I the, the stuff that I printed four years ago, I would not print on that paper anymore. <laughs> deal with my legacy, whatever that is supposed to be, when there's this constant flow of new choices? That's a really good question. Yeah, that's a good question, Jim. Hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't print on the paper that I printed on four years ago either. Um, uh, the papers get better. Um, I get, I get better. That my my workflow gets better. Um, I would tell you this, that, that, you know, go to the museums, go see photography up on the wall. Those people, as, as fragile as those images are, they still exude this, this personal, timeless quality. And that was the very edge of their technology in their time. Um, I had a conversation with Lee Freelander in New York and and Lee was looking at my my Leica M6, and he said, "Why are you using that?" And I said, "Well, you know, I get around. I I I use a lot of different cameras." He said, "If I was your age, I'd be shooting digital." He said, "I'm an old guy. This is what I do." And, and he said, "I'm too old to change, but um, it it's a it's a it's a venue that I know so well." Um, that I still love being in the dark room. I still love printing. And I said, I still love being in the dark room. I still love printing. I still love working digitally. I still like looking at stuff on screen. I still like posting things. And I still love post, you know, printing digitally. I think that 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 arc of time is is the strange, mysterious answer to your curious question. And that, and that we only have so much time on this planet. You'll keep growing until you don't anymore. But, but the cool thing will be that that they will keep making new stuff. That's that's clear. Um, how far you go, making that stuff work for you is a personal choice. 
it's a really personal choice. And uh, that's what makes it art. That's what, that's where technology and, and individuals meet in that middle. Uh, it's such a, a good point and a critical note for us to leave on in that it's never going to be about the pen. It's going to be about what you write. Yeah. But if you don't write it down, nobody can read it. Um, uh, I worked with an author, um, Norman M. Klein, wrote a book called The History of Forgetting. And the most important thing Norman ever told me was the most important thing about writing is typing because it doesn't type itself. Um, so as an artist, your job is to just keep moving the ball forward. Uh, but having it's, said it's, that, it's, Dennis, you might agree or disagree. Um, you know, Photorag 308 is is our most popular paper and has been for years, and it's the most popular paper across all brands worldwide. And I think people, um, when that paper came out, you know, 20, 28 years ago, people just standardized on it. And I'm sure a number of people have found other papers that maybe for a, a different project work, but there are some people that just will print a bulk or all of their work on the Photoreg 308. And, um, you know, when you find that paper, it works. It works. Um, so now I want to thank everybody um, yes. for their patience, their their yeah. commitment, their tenacity, their uh, uh, follow through, and uh, uh, you're not seeing my. You should know I'm cooking out here in the ten thousand foot sun, so I'm. Yep, and that's that's all. Pinhole camera. Oh, you have. Oh, cool. Very cool. Um, and I, so, uh, I, yes, thanks. Thanks to everyone. And it's um, it's so nice to see familiar faces. And I just want to tell Dan Cooney how nice it is to see him, because every time I do an event at Glazers, we still say we miss Dan Cooney being across from us. So yeah. Dan, that's it's right. Good and you. Veronica, I will talk to you tonight and see you soon. All right. All right. Let me Love stop there. Once again, thank you for both of you. Um, you know, we will make getting thank together you. a reality, and maybe we can, uh, you know, even make a cool video out of it or something and share with everybody. So, uh, once again, thanks for being part of this today. Um, remember that uh, we're taking uh, two weeks from now. We're taking the day off uh, since it's the middle of August, and all of us are traveling so many places. And then we'll be picking up again on. I believe the 28th of, of August and going back from there. So uh, I hope you all uh, tune in to Photo PXL so that you can see the uh, notices. Remember, if you go to Photo PXL and just sign up, uh, it's free and you'll get on the mailing list and that way you'll be notified when we have these uh, events and these photo chats and a lot of the other things that we're, we're doing. So um, that, that would be good. That's kind of my passion these days is, is sharing, you know, knowledge and uh, connecting all the, the people that have been so good to me in my career. And and rust. And, oh, uh, I'm a rustaholic, yes, I have to admit that. And, and so birds. I don't ever, I won't ever recover from that. <laughs> and birds. Yeah, birds. oh yeah, that too, just the whole thing. It's like, yeah, my, I have a, I, I have a style I use and I, when I post on social media, sometimes I do it just for Jeff. And I have a, a flock of birds that always end up in my pictures. So it's all fun. And look, I think that's what, what makes it so cool. They're great people. All of you are great. I haven't found a photographer yet uh, that I don't like, that I have issues with. In my opinion, I mean, every, well, maybe, but they're still not that bad. If the whole world would just take pictures, we'd be a hell of a lot happier together. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm into that. <laughs> yay. thank you guys very much for being here. I'm going to stop the recording now and um, we'll leave it on just in case anybody wants to unmute just for a general discussion. So.